Oh, this one. I think it's on. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Andre Jata, and I am from Senegal. For those of you who are not familiar with where is Senegal, it's just in West Africa. Uh, this past July, okay, is that good yeah, enough? Yeah, try that. All right, so this past July, I was, is that good enough? All right, hold on. Excuse me. We can either use that or we can use this one. You yeah, want to hold this one? Good enough? Good enough? Hello? Okay. Okay. So this past July, I was one of five graduate students from Virginia Tech who participated in the Ecology of Grazing Land System course. And this is presentation is a report of that trip and thank you to VFGC for their support. This course takes place every other summer and then the students before going to this trip learn a little bit about the region where they will travel. Um, the purpose of this course need objectives and so to provide interactions with uh, forage livestock professionals. They travel quite a distance this year, even before the class. So we meet up with the rest of the group in Dallas, Texas, in students from seven different universities and as much. from Missouri, Texas, uh, we travel through central Texas to the Mexico border in West trip in Colorado, uh, just short of the Wyoming border. So I will just give Uh, a few farms haven't been in Texas. Uh, this area has a lot of large conventional dairies, and then we visited who wouldn't be who couldn't make successful business running to in a confinement to really try a, a grass based dairy. So this has been successful, and he used species such as sedan grass and ocean peas. Uh, this new dairy uh, is, he used actually 30 cows in his new dairy, and he decided to sell uh, cheese instead of milk. It has been successful. He's, he has become a world-class cheese maker, and he sells his product to high-end products. But this site was a little bit unsettling for me because the producer said that he was not really concerned about really feeding the world. He's, you know, he said that, you know, really by selling his product to people who have money, he can, you know, raise a lot of money. He can pay now his everything with cars. So I think for him, uh, by hiring more, more people, by paying everything by cash, he makes a greater contribution to the economic region. So this claim about really if it is our duty to feed the world was controversial and started debate throughout the tree among the students. However, really, uh, making value-added products for high-end uh, markets were a common theme for several producers we visited. Uh, in Comfort, Texas, we visited a farm. Uh, they raise Angora goats, and the mohair produced by these goats is the greatest uh, revenue source for this farm. And here you can see a picture of uh, some mohair, and this farmer actually shipped his uh, mohair to South Africa uh, and wait until uh, market conditions are right because before bring, bringing back the, the mohair. So it is as he has an offshore bank account. Just like the, the dairyman, this producer actually sells his mohair to uh, high-end markets where it is turned into uh, expensive 
really start stable apparel. Uh, distinct from the cheese guy, however, we end up calling the dairy man a cheese guy. I don't know why, but you know. keeping, instead of economy, also keeping the, his family legacy. They also give supplement to the sheep. Here you can see some being fat in the feedlock. So really keeping the sheep comfortable is really important. And then even back home in Africa, in this picture, try also to keep the Cheap, comfortable, but they just have different resources. Uh, fire as a British management tool was a central uh, theme as we came to West Texas. Uh, fire exclusion and overgrazing led to, you know, invasion of British such as uh, juniper, which is really similar to the eastern red cedar that we have here. Um, this picture taken from the bus is sho showing what is happening when fire is completely excluded from this ecological site in Sonora. Uh, in contrast, this picture um, shows what happened, wh what the biotic become when sustained by a fire regime. Uh, this, uh, this site actually uh, supports more livestock and more wildlife and also reduces the chance of uh, severe wildlife, uh, wildfires. Daily group discussions really gave us the chance to recap what we had learned. Uh, from seven different universities and as and because actually we get uh, feedback from You know, through uh, our long trips in Mexico and uh, Colorado. Find uh, better views. Of and here you can see a hole in the wrong spot. Around here we call it, uh, you know, road running. Wrong bus. Uh, right, we find ourselves in a region not so dissimilar from our home state here in the footprints of the Animas River. Uh, Jersey cattle are rotationally grazed on a cool season fresh base. So the milk is made into cheese. Also, they produce uh, pasture poultry and beef, uh, which are sold uh, locally at our own farm site. And this producer here is really uh, interesting because most of his children are involved in the farm operation, but he made the requirement that they have to do their own business. They don't. What was also really interesting from the uh, every member of the family uh, has to lead uh, their family meeting at least once a year uh, along the Animas River. And then the next morning, some of us uh, took a frigid. It was not me, it was really cold. After our visit, the EPA accidentally spilled a billion gallon of uh, toxic mine water into the same river. Uh, from Durango, our trip took us to a high desert where farmers really are pumping massive amount of water. had uh, mixed agriculture, but now they develop a potato and alfalfa uh, rotation. And also based on, because of the legal so these farmers now are experiencing the amount of water they have to take from uh, the groundwater. And now to include sorghum because it used less water and in even including also some beef cattle into the farm operation. Uh, further is the Nature Conservancy Zapata Ranch uh, provide forage for, uh, for cattle and also in 
person on a low input 50,000 acres. What was really interesting about these ranches, they said they were conservationists at the same time, but they provide forages using grasses such as blue grama and needle and head. Uh, distinct from here in Texas, uh, most of the grazing in New Mexico and Colorado <coughs> is based on uh, state lands and at Pike National Forest, we also learn about the challenges of really managing grazing leaves on these forest lands. But when managed properly, these state lands can really use uh, uh, in Kremlin, Colorado, we can see here this kind of management that the farmers use. Most of the time, they're going to be grazing the cattle in a uh, national uh, site or on a bureau of land management in June and July. They're going to be moving the cows in national forest in September and August, and then they're going to be rounding, rounding up the cows and overwinter them for the rest of the year. We also had the opportunity to visit a unique ecosystem, uh, which is the uh, Alpine Troon Dry Rocky Mountain. We are not allowed to step on it. We visited two facilities devoted to the preservation of genetic resources. The first one was the National Center for the Preservation, which stores semen and eggs from animals and seed from plants all over the world. This is a long of cryogenic uh, preservation tanks, which actually uh, held some uh, seeds, and this room is actually secure from flooding, fire, and also tornadoes. The second place we visited was the uh, National Black Footed Forest Conservation Center, which holds six will be uh, breeded and then before introducing into the, the wild. Our last actually in in Colorado, where about uh, uh, 80, where uh, uh, 80 years uh, stocking density experiment has been in place, so we really get a chance to see how the changes, uh, how the management is affecting actually the productivity of these grasslands. Really, really different for uh, from Virginia or especially for Senegal. But I really learned a lot. Uh, actually, a perspective from students from different universities really gave me a new viewpoint of what good management is. And thank you also, VFGC, for uh, your contribution to our education. We thoroughly enjoyed the trip and are really grateful for this opportunity you gave us to explore really the grazing system of uh, Texas, New Mexico, and Colorado. I thank you. Questions for Andre? Will you be around the rest of the day, Andre? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Great. Very good. Thank you, Andre. We appreciate right. it very much. Work. Thank you. Can you see they lived in tents.